How is it possible that a single turtle defeated 2,000 men in battle? No, we are not talking about a real turtle, but rather the generals of the Allied forces, using the turtle shell as an inspiration to come up with an ingenious plan. By using a number of soldiers, the Allied forces create a maze that manipulates the direction of the enemies. The soldiers are equipped with sharp weapons which they use to slash the opponent's legs. Then they pull them inside the maze and finish them off. But how did we get there? In China, the remaining emperor of the Han Dynasty is heavily influenced by the prime minister of the empire, Chao Chao. The latter claims that there are two provinces that are trying to establish their own rulerships, so they must attack them and terminate their leaders. A counselor speaks up and says that the prime minister is just trying to serve his own interests, but he is soon executed by Chao Chao for daring to speak against him. Chao Chao gathers 800,000 troops and leads them to battle against the first province, whose leader is a man called Liu Bei. The small army manages to put up a good fight against the giant imperial army, but an advisor named Zhuge notices that they are not going to last long. Liu Bei is fighting a battle on two sides. His army tries to hold the enemies back, while at the same time they are trying to protect some refugees that Liu Bei has taken under his responsibility. Eventually, the leader decides that they should retreat. Some of his soldiers sacrificed themselves in order to buy some time for the rest of the army to escape along with the refugees. In another small village, Liu Bei's wife is trying to protect her little baby from the attackers. Thankfully for her, General Zhao comes to her aid and holds the enemies back. His skills are unmatched but the enemies are way too many. Liu Bei's wife gives him her baby and decides to end herself by jumping into a well. General Zhao tries to save her but he is unable to do so. Then, he notices that more enemies are storming in, so he wears the baby like a backpack, and proves once more that he is very skillful in battle. However, a larger number of enemy troops is approaching, so he mounts his horse and rides away. Elsewhere, General Zhang is trying to hold the line against the enemy troopers. When Chao Chao sends his cavalry against him, Zhang's men turn a bunch of shiny shields against their enemies. The sunlight reflects on their shields and blinds the enemy horses. The horses start tripping over, laying the enemy soldiers flat on the ground. Right next, Zhang orders his men to attack while he also joins the fight. As it appears, Zhang is unnaturally strong and manages to overpower many opponents at the same time. Soon, General Zhao arrives at the scene and fights against the enemies while holding onto the baby. He is such a good fighter that Chao Chao asks his generals who this man is. When he is told that this is General Zhao, Chao Chao remarks that none of his own soldiers is as brave as Zhao. Another fighter jumps in and seems to be one of the best warriors ever. He is able to take upon many soldiers on his own. Eventually, he throws his spear towards Chao Chao while the enemy soldiers surround him with their own spears. Even so, the warrior manages to escape and rush towards Chao Chao. The prime minister and army leader tells his men to stand by, allowing the warrior to ride away. When he is asked why he did that, Chao Chao replies that this warrior is going to fight for him when they win this war. Liu Bei's generals return to him, and Zhao gives him his baby. After thanking Zhao, Liu Bei calls his generals for a meal. There, Zhuge makes a suggestion. He clarifies that they can't win this war alone, so they should ask the leader of Wu province to work together and fight against the imperial army. Zhuge wants to go there himself and make the deal. Meanwhile, Chao Chao welcomes two new generals who are supposed to be experts in sea battles, Kai Mao and Zhang Yun. Kai has also made a map of the smaller provinces, claiming that the map is detailed enough to offer them an advantage in battle. Soon, Zhuge arrives at the Wu province and waits for the ruler, Sun Quan, to enter the palace. As soon as he has the ruler's attention, Zhuge outlines that Chao Chao is going to be here soon and the only way to stop him is to work together. Sun Quan needs some time to think about his options, which are either go to war or surrender. Despite this, Zhuge knows that he has to speak to yet another influential figure from the Wu province, General Zhu Yu. He finds the general overseeing his army's training, and notices that these soldiers are using the duck formation. At some point, General Zhu Yu raises his hand and everybody stops. Zhu Yu begins having a conversation with advisor Zhuge but they are soon interrupted. Zhu Yu takes Zhuge to the stable, where his wife, Xiao Xiao, is helping a horse give birth to its child. Zhuge helps them out and the little horse is born. Xiao seems to be a very empathetic woman and waits patiently for the newborn horse to stand on its feet while also talking to it in order to motivate it. Later that night, Zhu Yu invites Zhuge to a meal but they also start playing some music together since they are both familiar with a traditional instrument. In the meantime, Chao Chao is having a conversation with his doctor while staring at a painting. The painting depicts the figure of Xiao Chiao, Zhu Yu's wife. 
As it becomes apparent, Chao Chao has a secret motive for starting this war, and that is to kill Zhu Yu and Mary Xiao. Back in Wu province, Sun Quan is having a hard time deciding if he should go to war or not. To resolve his dilemma, Zhu Yu takes him on a tiger hunt. During the hunt, Sun Quan finds his courage by attacking the tiger with his bow. When he returns to the palace, he announces his decision that they are going to war. He also threatens his advisors to not utter a single word against his decision, or else they will have a fate similar to the table corner he just cut with his sword. Chao Chao is informed of this new alliance, and he starts preparing his army for an attack. At the same time, Sun Quan's army unites forces with Lu Bei's army. Both sides are preparing for a battle. This is the point where Zhuge suggests to the generals to trap some enemy forces by using the turtle formation. A unit from the Imperial Army marches towards their designated location, and their leader starts laughing when he only sees a turtle waiting for him. He believes that his enemies ran away and only this turtle was left behind. However, he is in for a big surprise. In a matter of seconds, Sun Quan's sister, Sun Shang Xiang, attacks the enemy unit with her own little army of women. The enemies suffer some minor casualties and decide to go after her, even though they suspect Sun Shang is going to lead them into a trap. Well, they were right about that. Soon, the enemy forces enter the turtle maze, and the allied soldiers start picking them off one by one. Shuga oversees the battle and seems to be very pleased with his plan. Soon, General Zhi joins the fight and kills some enemy soldiers. In addition, the warrior from earlier jumps in and proves to be the enemy's nightmare. He is so skilled that he turns 10 enemy soldiers into a kebab by throwing his spear. Then, it's General Zhao's time to join the battle. He starts fighting his enemies on his own, while his own soldiers do nothing but stare. General Zhang also joins the battle and dashes against his enemies. He is so strong that he is able to break the spears of his enemies in half. With a single punch, he sends an enemy soldier flying like a wrecking ball, and driving all of his comrades to the ground like General Zhang was playing bowling. Lastly, the allied soldiers start throwing ropes at their enemies who are standing on their horses, pulling them in and killing them. A single enemy soldier is standing alone on his horse, wondering what's going on. However, his number is up pretty soon and he is killed just like the others. The remaining enemies adopt a circular formation and try to defend themselves by turning into a human wall. They manage to kill some of the allied soldiers, but Shuga orders the men to change their tactic. By using a modded rope, the allied soldiers break the defense line of their enemies, leading them out of their holes. Another mini battle breaks out, where an enemy general shoots an arrow against General Zhao. General Zhu Yu jumps in the arrow's way and takes the hit. However, he has not taken much damage. In fact, he pulls the arrow out of his body and uses it to kill a couple of rivals by stabbing their throats with it. Finally, the good guys win, and they return to their province victorious. Chao Chao receives the news but he is not much worried since his army is huge. Back in the Wu province, Chuga does not celebrate much because he knows that Chao Chao is going to send his ships soon. He believes that the prime minister actually tested them by sending a small military unit to fight them. That night, Lu Bei sits down with Sun Quan, and they discuss their next moves. They have set up a small celebration for themselves and their men. While discussing, Lu Bei sees Sun Shang and is immediately impressed by her beauty. Her brother starts messing up with her, saying that he is looking for a noble man to marry his sister, but he is unable to find a suitable husband who could fit that role. Sun Shang is annoyed by his words and hits Lu Bei's pressure point on his neck, causing him to pass out. The next day, Zhuge sends a pigeon to spy on the enemy camp where Chao Chao has set up a series of Kuju games to raise his army's morale. This battle is not yet finished. The small provinces have managed to put up a good fight against the imperial army and their fierce leader. On the other hand, the prime minister is dedicated to getting what he wants, so he will not give up that easily. Despite the battles they won, advisor Zhuge and General Zhou Yu know that Chao Chao is going to attack them with his fleet. Zhuge has an idea on how to get the upper hand in battle, an idea that only a few are aware of. Zhuge sends a messenger pigeon to Chao Chao's camp to meet with the spy that has infiltrated the imperial territory. That spy is none other than Sun Xiong. She is watching a Kuju game, which is the Chinese equivalent of modern soccer. Sun Xiong helps a good player retrieve the ball and perform his tricks. This guy, Sun Xu Can, is the prehistoric Ronaldinho. He is so good that Chao Chao makes him commander of his unit. Sun Xu Can meets Sun Xiong and befriends her, believing that she is a man. Sun Xiang passes as a soldier. She uses her cover to exchange back and forth messages with Zhuge. Meanwhile, 
Chow Chow has to deal with another problem as many of his men have died of typhoid fever, the doctor argues that they need to burn the bodies in order to stop the disease from spreading, but Chow Chow finds a way to turn this problem into an opportunity, that same night, his men load the dead soldiers on rafts, and send them toward the Wu province, the next morning, the people of Wu province see the dead soldiers, and start collecting them in order to take anything useful they can find on them. Upon closer examination, Zhuge realizes that these people have died of typhoid fever and instructs everyone to run away. He also advises Zhou Yu to burn the bodies so they can stop the disease from spreading. On top of that, he has quarantined the soldiers that were infected, like he was a human antivirus. Out of a sudden, Liu Bei decides to drop out of the war. He claims that many of his men have fallen sick, and his priority is to keep them alive. If he sends them to war like that, they are going to die since they won't be able to defend themselves. Soon, Chao Chao receives the news from one of his generals. Knowing that Liu Bei has left Wu province, he believes that now is the time to make his next move. After meeting with his naval generals, he instructs them to be ready for a fight when he gives the signal. However, there is yet another play he has in mind. Chao Chao sends an intermediary to talk to Zhou Yu in order to ask him to surrender. Nonetheless, they are clueless that this has been Zhou Yu's plan all along. After playing mind games with the intermediary, Zhou Yu meets with Zhuge the next day, and they seize up their chances of winning the war. One problem they are facing is the lack of arrows since Liu Bei took his inventory away when he left. But Zhuge has a solution to that. He exclaims he just needs three days to harvest 100,000 arrows for them. At the same time, Zhou Yu believes he has found a solution for dealing with the naval generals, so both of them get to work. Zhuge observes the weather and notes that it will be foggy real soon, a fact that will give him the chance to harvest the arrows they need. In the meantime, Zhou Yu continues working up the intermediary by getting him drunk and playing a trick on him. One of Zhou Yu's generals calls him for something urgent and supposedly tells him that the naval generals will bring him Chao Chao's head. The intermediary hears that fake dialogue and later steals a letter from Zhou Yu. This letter has been supposedly sent to him by the two naval generals. The intermediary brings the letter back to Chao Chao who wonders if the two generals are making plans against him. In the meantime, Zhuge has prepared a dozen ships made of haystacks and leads them near the enemies. The foggy atmosphere provides them cover, and Zhuge orders his men to launch a fake attack. Believing that they are seeing enemies, the two imperial generals order their men to launch several attacks. However, their arrows do not hit any enemies. Instead, the arrows get stuck on the ships. When one side of the ships is loaded, Shuga orders his ships to turn around and harvest more arrows on the other half. Considering this battle a win, the two naval generals return to the camp where Chao Chao is waiting for them. The prime minister blames them for treason but the two generals deny the accusations. However, Zhuge has sent a haystack ship their way, and Chao Chao is convinced that his generals betrayed him. He believes that they helped the enemy by giving them arrows. Chao Chao orders the execution of his generals, but something does not feel right. Finally, he realizes that Zhou Yu has played him, but it is already too late since his men just executed the two generals. Zhuge returns to Wu province with his ships full of arrows, delivering on his promise. Then, he asks Zhou Yu if he delivered on his end. Zhou Yu is not yet aware if the two imperial generals are dead, so he pulls his sword for Zhuge to cut his head if he's failed. But then, Zhuge receives a message via the pigeon, saying that the two imperial generals are dead, which means that they both succeeded in their missions. At the same time, Chao Chao invites his intermediary for a cup of tea, but poisons him, blaming him for losing his generals. Chao Chao's assumptions were based on the intermediary's input. Sun Xiang sends yet another message to Zhuge, but this time she is apprehended by some imperial soldiers. However, her friend Sun Xu can helps her escape. Chao Chao is trying to get his men ready to attack, but the doctor advises him to delay the attack because many of the soldiers need more time to recover from their fever. Right then, Chao Chao enters the infirmary and delivers a motivational speech for his sick men. His speech gets them up and ready to fight. As for Sun Xiang, she makes it back to Wu and starts undressing. There is a good reason for that since her corset is actually a map of Chao Chao's area. Soon, both parties start constructing their strategy for battle. The province generals intend to attack Chao Chao's fleet with fire in order to destroy his ships. Although it sounds like a good idea, Zhou Yu notices that the wind is changing direction. If this is the direction of the wind during the battle, they will burn their own ships. Chao Chao has noticed this as well, 
So he tells his generals that the province fighters are going to defeat themselves. Zhuge takes a moment to think and observes the atmosphere. When he walks back inside, he uses his knowledge of agriculture to predict that the wind is going to change towards Chao Chao's direction tonight or tomorrow. Even though everyone believes that the wind will blow against the province ships, the generals decide to trust Zhuge but they also have to find a way to stall Chao Chao until they notice the wind changing in their favor. Zhou Yu's wife, Xiao Chao, removes herself from the scene as soon as she hears that. Having heard that Chao Chao is fighting this war in order to acquire her, she goes to him and asks to see him privately. Chao Chao takes her to his chamber and they start conversing. As it appears, they know each other from their youth. Xiao asks him to end this war because many innocent lives will be lost. Despite her words, Chao Chao won't change his mind. Not only he will take her as his wife, but he also wants Xiao Yu to kneel in front of him defeated. Xiao Chao understands his rigidness, so she tries to grab a sword and kill him. However, the prime minister is stronger and she can't complete her plan. During the night, the province soldiers wait patiently, as Zhuge observes the weather. When it's the right time, he signals everyone to attack, and the province ships light their fires. Then, they attack the imperial ships, and set them ablaze. The plan works really well for the province. The soldiers now get an opportunity to attack on foot. At the same time, Lu Bei and his own generals join the fight. As it appears, he just pretended to ditch Wu province, so Chao Chao would believe the numbers of his enemies were reduced. The imperial army tries to fight back by launching a bunch of fireballs. Even though they hit some of their enemies, the province soldiers keep coming in waves. They have worked on their strategy, and they use their shields as a defense system. Behind them, another wave of soldiers rises, and they attack with arrows set on fire. Not only do they kill several enemies but they also create mayhem in Chao Chao's ranks. Next, the province fighters use a sandstorm to approach even closer to the enemy. Prestigious fighters join the battle as well, and increase the morale of the province soldiers. One of them is an undefeated warrior and the other is General Zhao both of them taking out a large number of enemies on their own. Zhao even catapults himself above the enemy walls. Soon, all the province fighters are inside the enemy territory, but most of the enemies have already been killed. Despite this, Chao Chao still manages to hold Zhou Yu at sword point, also having one of his generals behind his rival. The good guys gather around him, and Sun Quan aims at him with his bow, but they don't dare to make a move as another imperial general is holding Xiao Chao. Chao Chao delivers his final bad guy speech by saying that he is the winner of this war. Then, he orders his general to throw Xiao off the wooden tower. Thankfully, General Zhao has sneaked up behind him and grabs a hold of Xiao. Sun Quan launches an arrow that grazes the top of Chao Chao's head and cuts his top knob loose, while the rest of the generals take care of the remaining imperial generals. Chao Chao is defeated, but Zhou Yu allows him to live. After taking a look at the thousands of dead bodies, Zhou Yu proclaims that nobody won this war. 